Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're good. Today we're going to be talking about the best 360 cameras for shooting real estate virtual tours. Now the reason I'm talking about this is because in my last video that I made or one of the last videos I made, I took you through how to create your virtual tour from choosing the equipment to going out to shooting it, to uploading it and finally sharing it. Now a lot of people ask me, well, what camera should I get? Which is the best one? That's what I'm going to take you through today. I'm gonna focus mostly on three cameras and the criteria I'm choosing is affordability, ease of use and availability. Now I'm assuming that many people watching this video will be using 360 cameras for the first time or shooting virtual tours for the first time because the demand for them has gone up since the whole lockdown process has been going on and many people have been asking me what camera should you get. Now the cameras we're gonna be looking at are the Ricoh Theta Z1, the KuCam 8K and the Insta360 ONE R. I'm choosing these three cameras because they are easy to use, they can each shoot high quality virtual tours and they are relatively inexpensive, so under a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds. There are other cameras out there that can shoot higher quality virtual tours, but they are more expensive and they are more difficult to use. So if you do want to know about those, then I'm going to talk about them briefly at the end of the video. But for most part, I'm going to be talking about the, ca the three cameras that I just mentioned. So let's go. Let's see what these cameras can do. Now to cut a long story short, I am gonna say that I think the Ricoh Theta Z1 is the best 360 camera for real estate virtual tours right now, definitely in this price range. It is the more expensive of the three, but I think it's worth it. Firstly, it features much larger sensors than the other cameras available. It features one inch sensors, which allows it to shoot more detailed images in different lighting conditions. It can deal with exposure and color and light better than the other cameras. It can shoot HDR bracketed photos automatically. It can also shoot raw photos. So those are the two main features that I look for in a 360 camera for real estate tours. Can they shoot HDR and can they shoot raw? Ideally both together, but if not, at least one of them will do. The KuCam 8K can also shoot raw photos and it can also shoot HDR photos. However, the KuCam 8K does have a really good mode for shooting photos, DNG8, which allows it to shoot eight individual exposures and then you combine them together to create a very dynamic, very high quality image. The Insta360 ONE R again has similar modes. It can shoot DNG raw and it can shoot bracketed HDR photos. It has two options for HDR. It can shoot automatic HDR photos, which automatically combine together and it's ready to go straight away. Or it can shoot in what's called night mode. Even though it's called night mode, I actually think it works better in an indoor environment like you would shoot for a virtual tour if for real estate or a museum or something like that. That's the mode you would use if you have the ONE R. So that's the reason why I chose those three cameras. The main reason being that they can all three of them shoot raw images and all three of them can shoot HDR bracketed images as well. But which one should you get? Which one is better? Let's take a look at some comparisons between them. I shot some images in exactly the same location with all three of these cameras so we can see the difference in quality and how they work. So let's have a look. This first comparison features all three of the cameras shot in exactly the same location in an indoor environment like you would shoot for any real estate virtual tour. It's in a fairly small room with lots of artificial and natural light so we can really test these cameras out. Now when shooting a real estate virtual tour there are a few things we need to consider. We need to make sure that the image is detailed, you do not want it to be blurry, you do not want it to be low quality, you do not want any overexposure. So what I mean by overexposure is essentially where the windows are, you do not want them to be just white blocks, you want to be able to look outside, you want to be able to see outside those windows and not have it too bright. You also want the camera to be able to deal with artificial lights well, so sometimes with cameras they can kind of create this band or these beams coming out of artificial lights, that usually is because of low quality sensors, so you want to avoid that as well. And you want it to be fairly high resolution so that when, if someone chooses to zoom in on the image that you don't lose too much quality. So bearing that in mind, we can take a look at these images. And I think in this comparison, the Insta360 ONE R is probably the weaker of the three. Now that I say that because if you can see outside this, this big door, these windows leading out to the balcony, it's overexposed. You can't see as much detail outside. It's very, very white, very bright. Whereas in the KuCam 8K and the Theta Z1, you can see outside like you would in normality, like your unnatural eyes would see. So we're going to knock the 1R out and for the rest of our comparisons, we're just gonna focus on the Z1 and the KuCam 8K. Let's take a look at another comparison. Also shot inside, also shot at exactly the same time and location. 
Again, I would say the Theta one is doing a better job. The image is more attractive, the exposure is more balanced, the colors look better. I think for the KuCam 8K, there's a slight blue tinge, which sometimes you do get with this camera. It does look a bit brighter, but I think the more realistic image is from the Theta Z1. Let's take a look at a HDR photo shot with both cameras now. This is where the camera shoots multiple exposures and then combines them together. With the KuCam 8K, you need to have a separate desktop software to be able to do this. It's free, but it's another step in the workflow process, so it is slightly more complicated than with the Theta Z1, which can do it all automatically. Now the KuCam 8K does a better job here than compared to just, just shooting with one raw image. I definitely think if you were gonna choose the KuCam 8K, definitely use the HDR mode, which does result in better quality images. You can see more detail outside. The Theta Z1 is also doing a pretty good job considering that it's all automatic inside the camera. It's not too much different from its previous image. I would say slightly worse because the banding in and the beams coming out of the artificial lights don't look as good as they did before. But overall, if you wanted a quick way of shooting virtual tours, then this would be the best way to do it. If we zoom into an image now and look at some details, ideally when you shoot a virtual tour, you want as many details to remain as possible when zooming in so that you know, objects don't look blurry, you wanna retain as much sharpness as possible. In this comparison, I would say the Z1 does a better job of retaining the details when zoomed in. I think if you can see the calendar there, you can see it's much sharper edges, it retains more color, more details, and it's just less blurred. So yeah, I would say the Z1 doing a better job. The downside to the Z1 is that it's slightly more noisy. That can be an issue with noise for the Z1. Uh, you can adjust that if you have Lightroom or Photoshop, you can re remove some of that noise. So from looking at these comparisons, I do think that the Z1 is overall the best 360 camera to use right now for real estate virtual tours. It's easy to use. It's definitely the easiest to use of the three. It can most of the time produce high quality images. That said, it is out of stock pretty much everywhere. I think lots of people are buying it up, so it is really hard to get. If you were desperate for to start shooting virtual tours pretty quickly, then the KuCam 8K is, I mean, it's not far off. It is still a great option. It just takes a little bit more work to get higher quality images. The Insta360 ONE R would be a good backup. However, it's not going to be able to shoot as high quality. It is the cheapest of all three of them. So if a budget was a concern and you weren't too concerned with having really, really high quality, then that would be a great option as well. Now I mentioned before that there were other cameras out there that can shoot higher quality than the ones that I just showed you, but they are more expensive and they're more difficult to use. If you are interested in those cameras, if you have the time, the budget, and the expertise to use them, then these are the ones that are good right now. These are the ones that I recommend. Firstly, the Insta360 Pro 2. This is the pro version of Insta360's lineup of cameras. It has multiple lenses. It can shoot extremely high resolution 360 photos. It has a HDR mode. It's been tried and tested. It's been out for over a year now. I think maybe even a couple of years now. Lots of people have used it to create virtual tours. And at the end of the day, it does create very high quality sharp images. It is, however, very large, very bulky and expensive. So. Um, is the difference worth it if you were just going to create because quick virtual tours probably not it's also more it's also more of a video camera so if you are just using it to shoot photos you would you would be wasting a lot of its potential another interesting camera that is great for virtual tours probably one of the best is called the X phase pro this 360 camera has 25 lenses which and it can shoot a maximum resolution of 134 megapixels now these are huge huge, huge files, which allows the camera to shoot very, very sharp images. In comparison with the cameras I just talked about, the Z1 and the KuCam, the X-Face definitely shoots higher quality images, especially if you're going to be zooming in on specific areas, it will retain a lot more detail than the other cameras. It is more expensive, it is more difficult to use, and it is less widely available. It is made by not really a huge company. I think it's just they just make this product, so it is quite difficult to get a hold of. The final camera I'm gonna recommend is actually a virtual tour creating machine. It literally is designed to, as an all-in-one product to create virtual tours. It's called the Lab Pano Pilot One. It is able to not only shoot your virtual tours, but also create them inside the camera itself. It has its own processor, has its own touch screen, has its own apps. You can literally shoot the virtual tour straight away, upload it straight away from the camera itself, and it's ready to go. The quality of the images I'm not too sure on because I've not used it. Um, it's not been tested that much. Not very many people have it. I think this is maybe one to look for in the future, in the next few months. 
Uh, yeah, it seems to be a very much all-in-one product where you don't need to upload anything to your desktop or do any editing if you don't want to. But yeah, that's one to look out for. Um, but for now, I think the ones that I recommended, the Z1, the Kukam 8K and the One R are gonna be best for most people especially at the start. And I guess if you feel like virtual tours work for you and you wanna to upgrade to higher quality, then later on go for one of these other ones. But for the start, I think those three are the best options. Found that useful, I hope it's helped you decide which camera you're gonna get. So um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna do one more video on how to create your virtual tours in Cooler, which is the software I use to bring them all together, add hotspots and upload to your website. So I'm gonna go through the process of uploading um, of using that in more detail soon. So yeah, um, until next time, I will see you around. Bye.